Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to briefly talk about uh, the differences and overlapping uh, commonalities between the professions of uh, business intelligence, data anal analysis, data analytics, and data science. So uh, to begin, uh, all three of these fields have a lot in common. Uh, there are a lot of uh, tasks or uh, goals and objective and even common uh, practice that are common between all of them but when it comes to the actual uh, uh, work goals and to uh, to the job market um, each one of these uh, professionals actually hold their own set of uh, tools techniques and uh, and practice that you uh, that I would like to uh, briefly talk about in this video. So uh, to talk about uh, data analysis and data science, these two are uh, uh, close uh, fields uh, or close disciplines. Uh, the, the, the goal of both of them is to drive or to, to, to attain data-driven uh, uh, insights from, from data, except that in data analysis, we're actually doing more of uh, data preparation work and we're looking at you know more unsupervised data analytics in other words we are looking for data-driven decisions uh, which require well-organized well uh, relevant raw data and stored in digital formats so for example if we would like to perform a, a, a analysis of a csv file or an excel file then we have those files stored in a digital raw uh, in a digital format and we're going to conduct an analysis to give uh, data driven insight from them and so data analysis is, is divided into two parts of traditional versus big data while the traditional uh, practice involves uh, uh more like case specific uh, more like balancing and shuffling between data sets and you know working with uh, uh class labeling categorical versus numerical data uh, doing data cleansing and preparation that kind of stuff big data is kind of the same thing the only difference is that you're working with uh data that are higher in terms of uh velocity volume and 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 and, and veracity and so that means in in big data you're automating processes uh, to actually do the same thing that you would do with traditional small data, except that you'll be uh, you'll be uh, 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 you'll be doing more text data mining. You'll be doing the auto auto you do automation of data mining. You will uh, preserve those techniques to uh, replicate it or to uh, apply it in in you know in other sorts of you know uh, in, in other projects. So, uh, big data while at the same time it's it's same as traditional uh, data analysis it involves uh, you know work, you know using the same techniques but kind of using a different tool a different environment a different platform for example uh, uh, data analysis a traditional data analysis would would require you to work for example with the crm uh, uh, platforms like customer data historical data uh, that you get from you know uh, available resources while big data actually involves uh, working with like bigger platforms let's just social media platforms or big uh, uh, financial uh, trading data platforms or uh, when, when I say that you know that big data involves more automated and more sophisticated techniques that's what I mean that you know in, in, in traditional data you can uh, do import of your data or you can just download your data or you probably do basic sql to get your data from your server data warehouses but in big data you'll you'll be building api connections or you'll be fetching a streamline or uh, establishing uh, data uh, data fetching or, or data streaming where you know you schedule uh, for the system to actually uh, attend the data in an automated regular basis, that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, big data may not be possible to do or to store or to apply the same techniques while you would do for traditional data. For example, Excel. Excel may be a good start point, but Excel is not the right tool. For example, if you were to uh, 
maintain or store uh, millions of records of, of data. Uh, and as far as uh, uh, that was those techniques I explained, as far as the tools are concerned, um, uh, traditional data analysis is more like uh, Excel, SPSS, uh, let's say maybe SQL, uh, R and Python are, all, are always handy. They, they, they are very uh, huge programming languages. They could be used for a variety, variety of things. We can also use them for basic data analytics or traditional data analysis. While for the big data, uh, uh, SPSS and um, Excel are out of the uh, out of the, uh, the out of the frame because it it's like again it's it's a whole different uh, uh, it's a whole dis different environment and it, it requires uh, different and to some extent different techniques but it definitely requires different tools and among them the most popular tools are, are like uh, uh, Hadoop, MongoDB, um, Scala. Sometimes you can also use Java. Uh, and of course, R and Python, which are the most, uh, the, the two most common uh, data uh, analysis or analytics uh, programming languages that we can use. Uh, for data analytics, the for the traditional data analysis, of course, uh, uh, you can you can start. You know, if you have come from a business background, economics background, mathematics background, you could be a database administrator and transition into data and analytics. You can be a data engineer and become a data analyst, or you can be a data architect. But for the big data specifically, you have to be an engineer, a data engineer, someone who knows how to work with data pipelines, how to work with establishing ETL tools, how to work with uh, multiple platforms, you know, know the, the data security, the data channels, the data marts, data warehouses, staging, especially with now that the, uh, that the uh, data store storing and, and, and uh, is, has, has, has become uh, uh, revolution, revolutionized through uh, big data clouds, environments, that kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's very important it's that you know uh, uh, some, some special skills that are uh, exclusive to uh, big data or big data engineering. Now, you may ask, like, uh, what qualifies uh, traditional something to for us to call big data from a traditional data? Because, uh, you know, they both are data. How can we, where is the cut point to say, okay, this is big data and this is small data? Uh, so let's say if you have, uh, let's say, half a million lines of data or records of data, does that really, uh, does that really qualify your data to be uh, uh, called the big data. So it's not only the volume that defines a, a data set as big data. Uh, uh, there are other factors I said at the beginning of the video, uh, factors such as variety, variability, velocity, veracity. These are the sort of characteristics that determine if, you know, the data that we're working with are uh, either big data or, or can be classified as big data or small data. So that was the uh, data analysis or data analytics part. Uh, let's go to data science again. Uh, data science is kind of a branch of data analytics. Uh, 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 the 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 whole data uh, manifestation of data science or data analytics started with basic things, uh, but it, it evolved over time to to more sophisticated, to more advanced features. So one of the advanced features today is is within the data science and we call it machine learning. So uh, same thing with data science, uh, uh, both acad academia and uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and market practices uh, divide data science into two parts of traditional methods of traditional uh, data science and machine learning data science. So uh, traditional data science uh, involves uh, the goal in traditional data science is assessing potential uh, s uh, future scenarios by using uh, advanced statistical methods. For example, uh, you know, if you want to uh, see a relationship between two uh, variables and if you want to predict uh, uh, the outcome of one, one variable based on another variable, then you can conduct a regression analysis, or you can uh, conduct factor analysis or clustering analysis to to get uh, to 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 build a statistic model, and then to be able to assess the potential uh, prediction of that specific scenario. Although in the in the machine learning uh, part of the data science, you're not only relying on yourself to write those statistic methods or to uh, develop those statistic methods, but more you're relying on the machine or the artificial intelligence 
to predict these behaviors for you in, in, in unprecedented ways. So uh, example of such uh, practices or, uh, or you know, so the techniques that, that may be used, uh, just like I said, for the traditional uh, 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 data science, you know, I give the example of factor analysis or regression analysis or just uh, uh, logistic regression or clustering, time series analysis, uh, all of them. But for data science, for the machine learning uh, example, could be uh, 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 supervised learning and unsupervised learning. These are the two branches that I have to mention while giving the example of the practices. So in supervised learning, you can do uh, what we call uh, deep learning. Uh, supervised learning, or you can do random forests, or you can do SF SMVs, uh, a variety of supervised um, machine learning algorithms that you can write and then let the machine or let the artificial intelligence to use those methods to give you prediction of based on that model. And another supervised learning uh, example could be, uh, uh, of course, K-means is a very popular one that I'll try to uh, 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 create a, a demo video on how to uh, perform a simple k-means uh, supervised learning uh, machine learning algorithm. So these were the examples of of, uh, of the techniques that that you know or the practices or the goals that that are used in data science. So uh, the the tools that uh, are common in in data science and traditional data science, uh, we can still use um, uh, Excel because Excel still have um, this one uh, ad hoc ad hoc or add on uh, feature called uh, real stats and there's another one called data and analysis that you can actually uh, activate and bring on and use it it, it allows you to do some basic advanced uh, statistical statistics and that including uh, regressions so that's why i would also include excel in that list uh, of course ibm spss eviews that's very common for econo econometrics stata and of course uh, r python and matlab those are the common programming languages that you can use for da traditional data science uh, projects but when it comes to supervised an unsupervised learning uh, machine learning, learning algorithm, then of course uh, the, the, the the two common data science program languages is R and Python are are, are, are uh, outstanding, as well as there are other uh, uh, tailored or spe specialized uh, tools that you can use, such as Scala, such as uh, uh, Rapid Miner, uh, such as uh, also Microsoft Azure has uh, machine learning uh, uh, features, components available within the Azure environment. You can also use Java, uh, C, uh, a, uh, and a bunch of other languages that I just don't have it on top of my mind to share with you guys right now. So uh, that was the uh, uh, that was the the, the definite, that was the, that was the those are the details on data science. Now, as you saw, data science and data analytics or analysis have a lot in common. They actually have a common purpose. Again, while data analytics involves around describing data, preparing data, more like manual preparation of data or maybe an automated preparation of data or getting uh, insight out of data. But data science, on the other hand, is, is more uh, focused on getting uh, far sight out of data, predictions out of data, and then not only building models to predict uh, uh, data uh, patterns of, or predictions of the, of the data, it, you can also create a machine learning algorithm where the machine itself would run those models, or tr you train the models and then let the machine run those models to give you predictions. So these were the two uh, important uh, uh, practices or disciplines within the data science, within the data uh, practice world. Uh, now let's talk about the BI, business intelligence. So the BI is kind of in the middle. It's it's not very technical. In the meantime, it's not very administrative. It's in the middle. It's it's it does not require a lot of hard coding and hard technicalities. But uh, it again, the reason I say it's in between is because it's using a combination of everything. So if you're a, a BI, business intelligence analyst or business intelligence developer, then 
you should know uh you should you should know more than uh, you should you should have more technical expertise about you know whatever business where you're building the intelligence for or, or business insight for so uh in in, in, a, in summary uh in bi uh use data to create dashboards create reports and then gain business insights out of those reports and so and then automate and streamline those reports in a way that it's 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 optimized and and available and also appealing to the viewers so uh while data science and data analytics involve a, a, a lot of well, again hard coding analyses uh bi also have in, in, involves uh, analysis but it's more limited to the visualizations. It all, it's mostly limited to building metrics and reports and dashboards. And again, a lot of time people make them, people misunderstand uh, when they say uh, when they say business BI developer. When they talk about dashboards or Tableau platforms, they only think that these platforms are, are only there to create graphs and visualizations. But that's not what they are. What they are designed. They're actually in the back end of these of these dashboard tools. Uh, there are uh, a variety of uh, ML uh, that are uh, that are already written to make those uh, uh, features and operations uh, uh, feasible, as well as uh, when you produce or when you develop uh, a, a BI uh, reports and dashboards, and you have to have good amounts of data knowledge. A good amount of business insight and a good amount of business knowledge to put together uh, to put together use cases or, or or requirements based on which you can create your dashboards. An example of such dashboards could be a metrics dashboard or a KPI or key performance indicators dashboard reports, uh, automated dashboards where you know you create a, a bridge of uh, connection between your dashboard and your data source, either it's uh, the cloud or it's, it's, it's a locally stored database, however it is. But it, it goes again, I'm just I'm just making sure that you understand that the, the BI goes beyond creating visualizations or creating charts and, 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 and graphs. So um, with that being said, there's a lot of uh, tools and, 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 and languages that we use uh, for uh, visualizations. But the most important one that's uh, outstanding in the market right now is Tableau. Of course, it's followed by Power BI and ClickView. Uh, uh, also Excel, Excel is very traditional. It used to be used for, uh, again for basic data visualizations and, 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 and graphics but now that we have uh, then we, now that we have moved from locally stored data to cloud based data the tableau is the best tool because tableau uh, allows you to streamline those connections and those data engagement so uh, i would say tableau is, 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 is the most is the most prominent uh, uh, tool in the job market for the bi purposes and of course you can use uh, r has some good amount of libraries for 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 uh, visualization and graphics. Python also has a, a good number of libraries that you can use uh, for for your visualizations and then graphics. And also, MATLAB is another one that I think uh, you can use for those purposes. So uh, uh, while uh, a, a data uh, uh, someone working in data analytics or data analysis world realm is a data analyst or could be a, a, a data engineer or if that person is working with big data or even a database administrator or database analyst. But when it comes to uh, power uh, business intelligence, uh, it's more like it's more like people with uh, more uh, with business domain knowledge. So again, while data science and data analytics, uh, they they both involve a lot of technicalities, a lot of uh, uh, not a good a good amount of knowledge of the statistics and mathematics and data and uh, and modeling that kind of stuff, but BI it requires some basic, maybe basic to intermediate level of uh, understanding knowledge of data and uh, and data practices and models, but more importantly a, a BI professional may need to uh, have 
uh, business knowledge, domain knowledge, uh, and, all, and also not only quantitative uh, uh, analysis knowledge, but also qualitative analysis knowledge, such as uh, doing SWOT analysis, which is uh, a, a not a quantitative analysis. It's just a qualitative analysis that is is you is is, is, is highly used in business intelligence purposes. So um, people that uh, professionals that work in the in the business intelligence roles, they are uh, mostly. Uh, I refer to as BI consultants or BI developers or BI analysts or business analysts. Although business analysts in the field of IT means something uh, slightly different than a business intelligence analyst or business intelligence consultant. Um, this was it. I hope that this video provides you some uh, good amount of clarification between these three uh, uh, growing uh, fields in the job market. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Until next one.